right, and welcome back. This is Raul. Uh, this time around, we're going to be looking at the Dofer A148 dual sample and hold. Uh, if you were with us last time, we went over the sample and hold section of this and demonstrated exactly what you could do with that. Um, and this time around, we're going to demonstrate the bottom section, which is set up as a track and hold. And we're going to hear how that is actually different than a sample and hold. And we may actually do a little bit of comparison too. Uh, so let's uh, set up our basic patch. Um, and I'll do a brief review if we need to. So trigger in on our module here is going to tell it how often this module needs to sample the input coming into sample in. Um, and then sample and hold out is going to be sending a voltage to whatever module we choose. So I could send it to CV of our standard VCO, uh, or I could send it to CV of our low pass filter. And we're going to hear what that uh, sounds like in terms of uh, musicality or sound design here shortly. So let's set up our trigger in. So we're going to take a square wave. And I have my LFO in the mid frequency right now, in case you're curious. Uh, and I'm going to patch it into my trigger in, just like I did before when I was doing the sample and hold. So now uh, the module knows how often it needs to fire a voltage out of the sample and hold. And now I just need something to sample. Uh, we're going to actually do a little bit of sampling from this module again. Um, there's plenty of things you could feed into here, such as audio or maybe in another, even another LFO. Uh, but for now, we're just going to stick with the random noise and see what kind of results we get. Um, let's start at the top. So we're going to start with the white noise, patch into our white noise. And then we're going to go into our sample in, sample in. There we go. And now we're going to patch out from our sample and hold out. You can see there's already some activity there. Positive, negative, positive, negative, yeah. Then if I bring my frequency of my LFO up, of course the lights start to flicker a little faster. So that's changing the frequency or how fast the sampling is occurring. So now I'm gonna take my sample and hold out, which is creating my voltages, and I'm gonna patch that into the frequency or the pitch of my filter or my uh, VCO, what am I saying? Patching into CV1, and I don't hear anything yet because I haven't patched it into my mixer. So here we go, I'm gonna take a saw wave. I'm gonna go into my mixer. There we go. So that is our sound. frequency down a little bit if I want to. To where it's just kind of a crawl. So fairly different than what we had before. go a little faster if I want to. Okay. So that's white noise going into sample in. Uh, in my experiments, not quite as useful, but it is a slightly different sound for sure. And who knows, maybe that will be your favorite sound right there. Okay, so now we're going to patch out from that, and we hear, of course, it stops because it's no longer able to sample anything. And now I'm going to patch into my color out, and I'm going to start to adjust the amount of high-frequency noise and low-frequency noise. frequency noise all the way to the top, red noise, 
noise. Now noise is not the only thing you can sample into the sample room, but that's what I'm kind of restricting this demonstration to, for now anyway. So there we go. There's a little variety, but not quite as much as what we had before. At least not what not not what I think of as as variety anyway. Okay, so I'm gonna patch out from the colored out, and now let's try our random output. See if we get some more interesting results. Ah yes, now we're getting some some interesting sounds. At least what I consider interesting. And I can adjust my rate. So my rate is going to adjust how fast the noise changes in the module, and you'll see that reflected in the lights over here. Also change the mixture of the high frequency versus low frequency noise. So definitely a different sound than what we had before when we were doing a sample and hold. I can adjust my frequency up a little bit. So that's our basic patch for now, our track and hold patch. Random voltage going out from sample and hold into our CV, number one. Um, we can change it just slightly by going into CV2 if we want. And then we can adjust how much of that is actually going to the pitch of the oscillator. frequency of my LFO. There we go, that's our track and hold type sound going into our standard VCO. Okay, so now that we have that sort of ingrained in our ears about how it's affecting the pitch, Unpatch CV2 and uh, I'm gonna actually totally unpatch that. And uh, we're gonna go out from our saw into the input of our filter. There we go. And we're gonna go from the output of our filter, you may know where I'm going already, into the input of our mixer. There we go. So there we have just a regularly filtered sound. We haven't involved sample and hold, or track and hold yet. So I'm gonna adjust this to taste for now. I kinda like that sound right there. I'm gonna cut off a little lower. Okay, so now I'm gonna take this signal coming out from the track and hold portion, and I'm gonna patch that into CV number two over here of my filter. I can adjust the resonance a little bit until self oscillation. Or I can adjust the frequency up a little bit. And there it is, a little bit difficult to hear, but if I bring my resonance down, I can kind of get a nice mixture of the two. Almost like a gurgling. And of course,
course, I can adjust um, the signal that's getting sampled in my track and hold over here by changing the rate. Or I can adjust the ratio of blue noise going out or red noise going out. Until I get something that I kind of like over here. Bring my level up a little. Or I can bring my frequency up. This is all kind of in the mid um, frequency of the LFO. I could flip over to my low, and it's going to be very slow, so here we go. But an interesting sound nonetheless. 